All right, I want to tell you. I'm going to show you a video of my very first bike. And I got to tell you how much improvement we have made since the early 70s. See that? That's the mono shock. This thing rides like a Cadillac compared to the video I'm going to show you. You got an adjustable deal up here for the rear shock. You've got high fenders. It's just amazing how awesome it is in comparison to what I grew up with for my first bike. Disc brake rear. Disc brake front. And to think I had to deal with drum brakes when I first started out. Neat shit like side protection, engine protection, skid plate, center stands. You're in a trip, I'm telling you. Okay, this is a uh, 1973 CT3 uh, Yamaha Enduro 175. I bought it in April on April 20th, 2013, and it is now July 13th, 2013. So I've been I've spent about the last three months. Uh, working on it, taking it up all apart, and this is the first attempt at starting it. was last started in 1983, so it's been 30 years. All right, so let's talk about the 1973 CT, actually it's a CT-03-175. Mine, I had to take the engine apart completely twice to replace the end of the kickstart kickstarts kick on the right I had to replace the bearing on the left and every time I had to replace that uh, if you go from right to left it's one, two, three I had to replace that case portion because the bearing would eat the case up there. And this is this is primarily directed at Mr. Duff Actor because I'm watching him go through that uh, that WR250. 
So I keep asking him questions. And it's not that I don't believe what he's saying. It's just I keep asking him questions because I went through so much bullshit with that Yamaha 175. So I, I really find his videos interesting as he rebuilds that uh, rebuilds that WR engine. Oh. I can't tell you how lucky you are to have a monoshock dual score. I, I just I can't explain the uh, how much better we have it now than when I started out and growing up. I mean, I'm 54 years old. Next month I'll be 55 years old. And I bought that bike in uh, 1976. So it was three years old. And I had to replace that bearing twice. Christ, man, it's only the kickstart. So I was asking Bell Factor. He replaced it the shifter bearing on this WR which knowing what I know now I would have replaced every goddamn bearing in the goddamn 73 but I didn't know the shit back then but oh my god and I love that bike and we used to ride two up on that little short fucking seat. And then now you look at what we got with the uh, dual sports now. It's amazing the difference and how far we've come. Yeah, I don't think you can even buy a 175 here in the United States. I don't think you can buy a 185. The only 200 or 250 that is street legal that I know of is the, uh, I think it's a Yamaha TW200, big fat ass tire. What their point of that was, I don't know. Before I got the KLR, I was doing all kinds of research because I was like, yeah, I want about a 250 this time. They don't do dual sports in 250s. No license plate, no muffler. Anyway. I just wanted to give you a little taste of my world. And why I respect people like uh, Mr. Belfacker that he's doing he's doing a lot of things that I I know but back in the day I didn't know or wasn't smart enough to think replace every you're going into the case replace every freaking bearing replace every damn thing in it Hats off to you, even though I don't have a hat on. Fucking cold here. 44 degrees, wind, rain. Just gotta make it till Monday. Then we hit maybe 60. But yeah, bikes back then were so simple that. Find a bike now that is still primarily kickstart. I don't think you'll find one. Find a bike now that is that has electric start and also has a kickstart in case the, the starter goes out. I think they started making those in 78 with the Suzuki 
TS 185s to head dual. It's it's honestly it's just amazing to me how far how far we've come in bikes now. Yeah, and I know I show the video of the BMW and I show a video of a '73 Yamaha, but whatever, man. All right, NT8 on the porch. Hope you enjoy this. Talk to you later.